Hello and welcome to the latest new rack tutorial. Uh, this time I want to go over some of the new features in version 1.20. And we're going to start with something called Audio Clip Launcher, which can be found in the Generator section. Now in the previous version of new rack, I actually introduced uh, the ability to actually zoom in uh, greater than 100%. And that's fine, it's great, but uh, some people had asked for something called a scroll lock in order to freeze the pinch and zoom and we now have one of those on the left bar okay now this module has nine touch pads and you can assign uh, sound samples to each of those pads and uh, basically we do that by uh, either dragging and dropping directly onto the pad or as it says at the bottom of the screen we can actually drag up on a particular pad and reveal the pad options now if we pick the second of these options, Assign Samples, it will launch the New Rack Audio Pool. And this is kind of a, a global place where New Rack stores all its samples. And if you look in the Drums folder, you'll see that there's a few samples already here. And we can preview those samples by clicking them and pressing the play button. Now if you tap a drum pad, you'll see that it has a red highlight. And then it's just a question of picking one of these samples from the pool and clicking Assign Sample. You can either do that or you can drag and drop directly from the audio pool onto the uh, pad itself. Now you're free to drag and drop uh, files from the file manager into this audio pool, create new folders and actually uh, arrange and keep everything tidy within there and then just drag them to your pads when you're done. As you can see here you can even drag directly from the pop-up file manager uh, onto a pad itself to uh, assign a sample. Now normally when you uh, press uh, one of these pads the sample is triggered and then it just plays till it's finished. But if you uh, press the looped button which is to the right here, uh, it will play in a continuous loop and it will only stop when you press the same pad again. So that's great for launching uh, looped samples. So you could launch them directly from your keyboard on a key press. Now that loop button was actually uh, enabling the pad that I just played. So if you hit a pad, the pan and volume and looped button uh, are set for the corresponding pad you've last hit. Now also when you hit one of these pads, it actually generates MIDI note information which is sent out through new racks MIDI out. So it can be recorded and played back. So you can actually trigger these pads again using MIDI. So we'll touch on that a little bit later. You can also configure exactly what these pads react to using the MIDI mapping. So right now they're uh, defaulted to no information, but there could be CC information or something else. So if we move new rack to one side for a minute and take a look at the MIDI monitor I've got installed here, uh, we'll clear that. And then we can actually take a look every time I press a pad with a new rack. Uh, you can see that the MIDI note information has been sent out. So we could record that into a DAW of choice. And of course we can do the inverse and we can play MIDI note information in via the keyboard and have the pads react. Um, and like I say, your MIDI mapping controls what those pads are actually picking up. Uh, I described that in the last video, so if you're unsure, take a look. Now another great new feature is the ability to actually save presets on a module by module basis. So in this instance, because we've configured this rack here with uh, nine uh, of our samples, we can actually save a preset. Now all I did there was double tap on the name in the left hand header of the module. Double tap on that and you'll get this little pop up menu and from that I can pick save preset. Now I can double tap again and I can pick load preset and we should be able to see that same preset. Now what I've done is I've loaded one in, in here that comes with uh, new rack uh, which is just a basic drum setup uh, but you could use that just to quickly try it out. Now just so you're clear about this I'm going to add a tape delay to the rack. Um, now that's we, we've now got uh, MIDI based instruments and audio instruments and as you can see they work in conjunction nicely 
But if I, if I make some settings on this delay and want to save them, I just tap in the header and pick Save Preset. And we can give that any old name. And if we go back and have a look at Load Preset, you see there's only the preset for this module. It only shows you the presets for that particular module, not the ones we saved for the previous module. Now to complement the MIDI control module we added to the last version, uh, we now have a MIDI pads uh, control panel, which is very similar to the clip launcher in looks. But basically, uh, it's, it can be found in the MIDI section called MIDI pads. Now what I've got here is uh, the MIDI pads hosted in a MIDI processing slot. So it's a separate instance that's firing off MIDI note information. Uh, to the se second instance of new rack which is uh, hosting a clip launcher now if we enter interface builder and click on one of these pads and then pick uh, midi mapping from the options button we can actually uh, take a look by clicking on the individual pads and just see exactly what's been fired off here and this is where we can actually change what information sent when we click on one of these midi pads uh, right now we're just sending a range of no information but it's up to you you could send what the hell you like to whatever you like and if we drop back to the other instance with the uh, clip launcher and go into interface builder likewise we can actually click on the pads uh, enter MIDI mapping and see exactly what the uh, uh, MIDI information these pads are responding to as you can see they're looking for incoming data on MIDI channel 1 notes 36 onwards. Now previously we've been able to convert uh, knobs into faders because some people prefer faders to knobs. Um, but now I've been asked to be able to go the other way. So if we actually open a version of a graphic EQ which is very heavy on the uh, faders. Uh, I'm going to, just going to turn off the title and the border here and turn off clip to bounds so that I can drag this output uh, slider. Um, and then I'm just going to pick um, options, uh, convert fader to knob. And here we have a resizable knob. But enough with the double entendres. Um, now don't forget if you ever make a mistake you can always uh, bring up the uh, tools palette and just hit the undo button and uh, we can go all the way back to the slider again. Now moving on you can see here that I've actually combined the MIDI pads and the MIDI control center together in one um, interface using interface builder. Now we can paste a backdrop in here just like we always did but if you bring up the tools palette now there's now a background options here and we can paste from here so once you've pasted the background you now have the advantage of being able to use uh, the alpha channel to make it as bright or light as you want we also have flip options so you can flip horizontally and vertically just maybe some combinations of that will work better than others of your image so uh, that's definitely something worth uh, looking out for now while we're talking about faders there's another addition which I want to go over. Um, in previous versions of New Rack we've been able to change the knob style. Um, and that really changes the look and feel of a, a, a custom built rack. Um, so we can now change the uh, images of the faders as well as the knobs. And I've got a, 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 a module here uh, in Interface Builder and uh, it contains both knobs and sliders so just to show you here how easy it was we just pick a new knob style but we could equally now pick a new fader style and there's one here that is quite nice uh, in that it has light up faders so if we select the faders we can actually apply a color to those faders um, you can even paint them individually if you want obviously um, just to give everything the same look and feel I'll change these uh, knobs so that they have a little glowing uh, um, indicator on them so uh, we can now there's several uh, fader styles to choose from um, and I'll probably be adding more along the way now finally uh, I want to just highlight something that's changed um, 
If you look at this rack, we actually have a splitter that's splitting the audio into two tracks. One's going through a reverb, one's going through a delay, and then they'll be merged back together again at the other end with a mixer. Now, because we have actually two lanes of stereo, um, we can now actually add individual VU meters to each of these lanes. Uh, previously, you've only been able to add a pair of VU meters, which uh, didn't make a lot of sense if you um, were splitting signals up into two or three and then merging them back together again. Now, obviously, because we can actually store presets on a module by module basis, uh, it would be nice to be able to back these up, especially if you're moving from one device to another. So you have to run NURAC in standalone mode to access these features. And if you click on the menu and uh, pick file transfer from the menu, um, you'll get up a little dialog, which will give you a URL to type into your web browser. Now, once you type that in, uh, you've got to press one of the buttons, racks or presets. If I press presets, then you'll see a view of the presets folder in your web browser and you can back up and restore from there. Right, so that's about it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.